love this larger conversation here about the virtues of that strong unilateral executive versus the the congressional sort of driven model right you know it, it, what what is more inclined to liberty we've seen how the jacksonian model provides very concrete victories but you can't really reconcile a strong man leader with secession right you know, it, it, you know whether it's jackson or or caesar or napoleon or any of those sort of figures if, if you have this role where you where you are you, you create this, this personality cult that allows you to kind of restructure, you know, government, you know, a, a corrupt government, a, a out of control government and bend it to your will. It is not within your personality to allow South Carolina to leave. <laughs> and it, it's difficult to reconcile those two, because here you have on the economic side of things, this is great. But on the political side of things, obviously, the, the, the importance of political self-determination and the virtues of political central, uh, decentralization. You know, it, it's, it's, you know, I don't know how to, you know, this, this is to me the greatest failing of Jacksonians, you know, that, that this Jacksonian period, uh, again, even though there wasn't, you know, the troops were not marched on South Carolina over this great, but you know, th- this conflict is, is something that I, I don't know how to resolve internally. I just think it's really fascinating. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And this is, I, I, I mentioned it in, in, in my book that this is a, a weakness of the Jacksonians reform through the executive branch is that when you're concentrating power uh, in, in the executive branch to try and attack cronyism in other directions, of course, power tends to corrupt, right? We, we've been through this time and time again, ad nauseum. So Jackson's force bill and his uh, his, his basically attacks on um, South Carolina or his criticism of what they're doing, it, it looks like an, um, an imperial proclamation, okay? And this sort of portends maybe what James K. Polk is going to do during the Mexican War and his heavy-handed imperialist um, uh, it, it, uh, invasion of Mexico, Right. So this is it, 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 it's it's it, it's 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 something that every every strategy has a weakness. And this is ultimately the weakness of the Jacksonian executive strategy. But the important thing is that and, and this sometimes I think gets overlooked in this struggle for free trade, particularly regarding South Carolina, free trade during this time period was a broad-based movement. There was a Philadelphia free trade convention, okay, before the compromise tariff was pushed for of both free trade Southerners and free trade Northerners. Uh, You've got Albert Gallatin, he's there. You've got Philip Barber, he's there. Uh, You've got all of these economists who are um, influenced by uh, John Baptiste Say and Adam Smith, et cetera. So this, this was something that was going to be pushed through by the Jacksonians. South Carolina was kind of going through its own uh, political turmoil, and they were upset that tariffs weren't being lowered fast enough. Not belittling that complaint, because uh, of course this is you know by 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 not defaulting on the debt and using revenue to pay it off you're getting pissed at people who are paying those taxes right so that it is a valid complaint but the the Jacksonian coalition including Van Buren uh, the or the Van Burenite supporters etc they were able to negotiate a crisis that really excuse me negotiate a resolution to the crisis that lowered government um, you know lowered government involvement really in 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 all in, in in all aspects right because they were able to lower tariffs all right they were so they were able to get a significant um decrease in tariffs over 10 years not the two year decrease the decrease in two years that um you know the, the new yorkers supported they jackson vetoed henry clay's distribution bill to distribute revenue to the states to kind of prolong tariff reduction so jackson's like nope vetoing. And even the force bill uh, ended up, South Carolina said, no, we don't like this, but Jackson decided not to do anything about that. All right. So that's significant in itself. And it's, uh, this all happened, you know, right around the beginning of the, the, the second Jackson administration or the, the transition from the first to the second. And so the significance is that, you know, the, the, the move to free trade was going to be accomplished by the Jacksonians without South Carolina, but the South Carolina nullifiers um, did use a state's rights reform to sort of speed up this process more. Now, it could have caused a major constitutional crisis, but you know, where's the fun in politics if, right. if, if, if it doesn't? So that's the way I look at it. I think that 
um, well, maybe Jackson doesn't come out the best in this. The Jacksonians uh, certainly they they still do succeed. It seems like it's almost necessary to have a a moment of political crisis in order to get anything significant done, right? And and, and here's a case of it being done in a, in a good way. Uh, usually this goes in the, the, the wrong way, uh, particularly after the 20th century. Um, but yeah, there is something to be said about the, the virtues of, of political crises.